Two weeks ago, I had the chance to go back to three very important places. I've written about these places before in a song called Declaration. It's a song I've been working on for over a year now, and it's been pretty difficult to make it what I want it to be. My mission was to capture the spirit of those places in the song, to claim them as my homes, the places that made me who I am. I'm still trying to figure them out. My trip two weeks ago brought me from the offices of City Year, New Hampshire, to Wilmington, Delaware, to Elmira College. At each of my homes, I was there to say goodbye to some piece of it. I was in the offices of City Year, New Hampshire on a Tuesday night to celebrate Alex Allen, one of the co-executive directors of City Year, New Hampshire. She's leaving the site after 12 years of working to build an incredible world that I was lucky enough to be a part of for two years. And I see my time there as the end of my youth uh, in some ways. Sure, I'd gone to college before, but City Year helped me transition into what I'll be doing for the rest of my life. City Year helped me become a leader. It made me care about human beings in a different way, in a deeper way. I learned how to be a better person in large part because of the work that Alex Allen did to create such an incredible world. Alex was the first to show me what a true leader could be. Someone who has love and patience for everyone she leads. She also taught me that we must look past the immediate moment. What we do today is necessary only because it will allow us to do something in the future. The following weekend, James and I journeyed to Elmira College for our final event, the commencement of the class of 2012, which is actually the last class that I shared the campus of Elmira College with. Elmira was the first place that was completely mine. I didn't have to share it with anybody, with my friends or family. It's where I first made camp, where I was able to build a world for myself. It became a, a place of friendship and growth, a home. The 24 hours that James and I spent on campus were mine to celebrate the end of the relationship that I had with that place. From now on, I'll only be on that campus as a guest, as someone whose family is no longer there. But before we arrived in Elmira, we stopped in Wilmington, Delaware for a brief time. A good friend of the Riley's, Ed Mulvihill, was hosting a beef and beer fundraiser in the cafeteria of our grade school. James and I attended St. Helena School five blocks up from our house for most of our youth up through eighth grade. And a few years after James left, the school merged with another Catholic school a few blocks farther down the road. But last year, the school closed for good. There's a certain oddness to drinking yingling in the same room where you used to drink from cartons of chocolate milk. But it's also fulfilling in a way. It's a coming full circle. The return of the ones who went away to make peace with the past. That's why I returned to my high school to read a piece that I wrote as a high school senior. Our high school's literary magazine was called The Elizabethan, and my copies are full of the poetry of people I used to know. Each year, a senior would be able to write a piece for the back page, and in 2005, I was asked to contribute a piece. Since this is a time of graduation, of change, of saying goodbye and honoring the past, I'd like to read it now for you. At the beginning of senior year, I hated just about everything. There was not a single thing in my life that wasn't changing or ending. This is most obvious on the wall. I'm talking about the wall on the other side of Cedar Street. Since freshman year, it's been the place where my friends and I waited for our rides. I guess it's heyday was last year, but I only think that because that was the first year I was able to wait there after school. For my first two years of high school, Gordy would take me home and he always wanted to leave as soon as possible. I really miss that guy, even though he lives across the street from me. But he has his life and I have mine. No longer are they intertwined. But that's okay. People grow apart, go off to college in other states, they leave the wall. Anyway, this year I was the only senior there after school, except for Tony and Mike and occasional appearances by my other friends. It's mostly freshmen and sophomores waiting there now. After a while, I had to accept that the wall isn't ours anymore. Things never really stay this, the way they used to be. That's for the best, I think, because if nothing ever changed, we would stay the same forever. But things do change and we have to grow and adjust to whatever life throws at us. That's the most important thing I've learned this year. So now I like to tell the underclass, the wall is yours now. Take care of it, enjoy it, and when the time comes, give it up to the next group. They're going to have to grow up too.
Massachusetts And I can't predict What's coming next But I do know That I will 